Welcome everybody to this World Satsanga held on the 27th of September 2023 in conjunction with Kevin Moore and The Kevin Moore Show. And as usual, I encourage you to visit his YouTube channel, The Kevin Moore Show, to see how he's capturing various different levels of understanding from his, his show they call us Channelers, which is exposing different ways of interpreting the, the greater reality through different skill levels and different levels of um, uh, so it's a absorption of the greater reality with the, with the various different modalities that these individuals have. Very exciting way to look at it. And it shows you the different levels of quality as well, the individuals and their capabilities, which is fantastic. This lecture is based upon nowness and how do we understand now? Now, as spiritualists or, meta or metaphysicists, we talk about everything experienced in the now is what is how things happen in spirit. But what, but what does that mean to us? I mean, we can just about experience what we're experiencing now in you know, one second per second, uh, one minute by, per minute, one hour per, per hour. But that's in a linear perspective, isn't it? That's, we're experiencing things in a, in a linear way because we're in such a, such a low frequency here that we, we can't experience things faster than the, the normal sort of refresh rate that we experience as a function of being here. Now, if we consider taking cinefilm and each exposure is, is, is an exposure in the nowness, and the role of film is the, the collective level of exposure of the nowness, then we can use this in, as an example of trying to understand from a human perspective, a human perspective that is used to linear existence, not continuous, con uh, shall I say, continuous now existence where everything is existing in the now, that is the past, the present and the future concurrently, and all the different parallel versions of those, the different event spaces, then we can start to think that the whole cinema film is the total nowness, the nowness in totality, this ever expanding nowness that's existing concurrently. Now when we take a cine film, we to make sure it doesn't jump and start and is too fast or too slow, we take about 60 frames per second. That's the, the number of frames that need to be taken and, and then pl played back or exposed again to us. So we can see a film without seeing gaps in between the movement of the individuals as a result of the different frames that are being taken. If we reduce the number of exposures per second down to 30, then we start to see things in, in a less fluid state. If we reduced it down to 10, 10 exposures per second, it, it would be even more jumpier. We start to lose the resolution. We start to lose the detail. If we increased it to say 300 exposures per, per second, we start to gain a lot more detail. And this is what happens with, with high speed photography when we, we take, let's say 300 exposures per second, and then we play them back at the speed that we, we have the ability to see things in a fluid motion with the human eye, which is about 60 frames per second. We then start to see things happen very slowly. So if, for instance, you'd see the effect of a drop of water being dropped down, undulating and oscillating, hitting the water, creating a huge splash, the, the, and the waves associated with the splash as well, and the absorption of, of the of the drop of water into the water that it's going into. Maybe it's a bucket of water or maybe it's the sea. So we can see that the number of exposures creates a level of detail. And if we can consider that the, if the vast number of exposures that can be achieved in a second creates a, a massive level of resolution, level of data, then we can start to see that if we as energetic beings could experience things in thousands of times per second, we can see the detail behind everything in much, in much more clear ways than we do concurrently. But if we consider that we can't do that because we're in a linear state of existence, we're in such a low frequency that we can only experience things you know, in milliseconds or one second per second, 
or and then number of seconds per minute and number of minutes per hour number of hours per day number of days per week number of number of weeks per year number of years per decade etc etc then we start to realize that actually we, we're missing a lot of information let's get back to this role of film because if we think that's nowness as we're experiencing it now as you're experiencing listening to this lecture now is an effect a function of one of those frames of exposed film on that role of cinefilm and that all of those exposed frames on the cinefilm represent potentially all your pasts in this incarnation and all your futures in other incarnations and all the sideways experiences that you might have had as, as a function of being in uh, other event spaces then the whole cinema film is the nowness in totality which is ever expanding of course but it's not expanding in a linear way it's in expanding in a nowness way <laughs> so we have to consider that now is ever is an ever expanding thing based upon the potential to be in structured space once we move out of structured space into non-structured space there is no demarcation associated with structure so everything is now irrespective of how past present or future-ish it is so let's consider that that is the ultimate position that we, that we end up being in where everything is now and that gives us an understanding of how we can understand things from the future now and things from the past now from a, a clairvoyant perspective or a, or a channeled perspective because it's we're accessing the now but a different point in the now let's refer back to the film if we look at that role of film which is let's say two and a half hours of cinefilm and each of those exposures is a different this different nowness from our perspective if we focus on another one of those images let's say halfway through well that's a different nowness but it's all part of the total nowness because it's part of the total film so if we was to experience the the film being replayed back to us in one frame per second we could see the frame and absorb it in a second and then move to the next frame and absorb it in a second we would be able to go through that two and a half hour film in two and a half hours for example considering that each of those exposures is a version of the nowness that is a function of us experiencing it in a linear fashion but let's say we can experience all of those exposures on the film in one go concurrently that is experiencing the nowness now from our perspective we can't see a whole two and a half hour film in a second can we <laughs> we can't see because it'd be too difficult for us considering that each second is 60 exposures so there's 60 times 60 times 60 times two and a half you can work that out so I, I, I shan't do the maths for you but there's a lot of exposures there. there's a lot of nows in this total nowness that is represented by the film the, this role of film which is two and a half hours of cinefilm so the only way we can consider the nowness is to be able to tap into a particular now to focus on a now and this is what happens with, with clairvoyance or, or mediums they tap into the nowness and they can only focus on one now so they might only focus on a particular version of now which may or may not be in the future or it may or may not be in this particular version of existence it may be in a different event space so when we get experiences where we go to see a medium and they tell us something about our future and it doesn't happen maybe it's because they tapped into a different exposure on the role of film which is a different event space so that's like having that role of film on top of another roll of film on top of another roll of film on top of another roll of film so not only are you getting the the linear version from the exposures from the start to finish on the roll of film equally in narrowness but you got duplications of the whole roll of film because it's different event space as well so maybe you've got let's say 250 rolls of film stacked upon each other all representing the now concurrently every aspect of existence concurrently but also representing in this instance 250 versions of nowness i.e 250 versions of 
event spaces or parallel conditions. Now, clearly, the number of parallel conditions is a function of the number of entities that are concentrating in one particular version through their, through their choices and those other entities that, that, that choose to corroborate with that particular reality or event space, therefore creating a larger event space, therefore creating a larger environment. So 250 is just an arbitrary number. Don't take it as being the, the number. So now we see that each of those rolls of film has a now represented by one, one, film, one, one frame of exposure. What we can experience is one of those frames of exposure because we're in a, in a, in a low frequency environment where we can only experience things in an extremely low resolution linear way. This is why we can't understand nowness, because we can only experience it in one frame, one frame at a time. 60 frames a second. That's all we can do. It's our maximum exposure level. If we experience, if we experience it faster, it's difficult for us because things are moving faster until we slow it down. When we slow it down, we can see things happening in a more detailed way. <clears throat> With the high speed film, let's say 300 exposures per second. If we slow it down to 60 exposures per second, we can see more detail. It's the more detail that we can experience that is the result of being in a higher frequency environment. So the difference between being in these, this collective first three frequencies that creates the, let's say the physical aspect, the gross physical aspect of the physical universe if we move up the frequencies to, say, the 12th level frequency, which is the right at the top of the frequencies associated with the physical universe, then we could experience more. We could be able to experience and understand and work with maybe 500 exposures per second because the, it's finer. The resolution is in more detail. There's more content associated with it. We're able to understand a lot, lot more. Now think of being able to experience what you can experience in a higher frequency than the 12th frequency associated with the physical universe. Going into the next level, the 13th frequency, which is the first frequency in the first sub-dimensional component of the second full dimension. And you can see that we jump again because every time we move a frequency, we jump up to the, in terms of the, the finitude to the power of 12. So nowness is relative to basically frequency from a human perspective let's leave it at that because it's not but it's, it's it's a much higher function than that but it gives us something to work on it gives us a datum to work on so if we can move up the, up the frequencies we can experience and absorb more and more frames per second than we can here maybe we can experience a whole roll of film in a second that would mean we could, we could experience 60 times 60 times 60 times two and a half instantaneously. That would mean we'd be able to understand all those different frames of nowness in one go concurrently. So this means that we can understand everything being in the now as being able to be a higher frequency and being able to understand a roll of film being exposed to us in a second. All those different exposures that would normally be, be understandable to us at one frame every sixtieth of a second is now instantaneous. So we'd understand every aspect of nowness associated with that roll of film. Now, now let's consider being in an even higher frequency where maybe we've got a thousand rolls of these, these films, a thousand times two and a half hours and all of the exposures associated with those films taken at 60 frames per second. So we're starting to see we can understand and assimilate everything that's happened in that roll of film in all the different parallel versions. And again, another arbitrary number, a thousand parallel versions of everything. So we can understand it and assimilate it and, and, and work with it and be it consistently. So it's not two and a half hours, it's now. It's not a bunch of different exposures 
that takes two and a half hours for us to understand, it's now. Extrapolate that further into days, weeks, months, years, decades, centuries, millennia, billions of years, trillions of years from a human perspective, and we would be able to understand all of that if we were a higher frequency, if we, if we go right up into the multiversal environment, into a, diff, into a much higher frequency, in a much higher sub-dimensional um, component, into a much higher full dimension, then everything is now. Everything that every entity, every true energetic self, every guide and helper, every aspect that's projected from a true energetic self or shard that's projected from an aspect has experienced, is experiencing, will experience, could experience, possibly experience, is likely to experience now. That's how to understand nowness. Nowness is being able to understand everything that's in front of you now, not at the rate of 60 frames per second as we do now. Well, I hope that explains it for you. I hope that's understandable because it's a, it's a good, interesting concept to make, that allow you to understand what nowness is and how we can, as human beings, in its linear, low-frequency environment, can understand nowness. It's about being able to process data instantaneously and concurrently, which we have difficulty doing when we're exposed to low frequencies in an incarnation. I hope you understand what nowness is now and how to use this as an example of what nowness is. Let's move on to the questions and answers. So, uh, well, welcome to you all. I'm Mr. Sanger on the 27th of September 2023. It's a delight to be able to work with you all again. Um, we've got a <clears throat> series of questions first from Ulla, who can't make it. She's uh, having a vacation, which is wonderful. I've just come back from a vacation, which is even more wonderful. So we all have to have our batteries recharged, and it's nice to be able to come back with lots of, um, lots of vigor, vigor and lots of energy. So the first question is, um, Wendy Kennedy said that Mother Earth is a star in training through her evolutionary process as a consciousness. Earth will one day become a role of a star. Is that true? Um, I did some meditation on this question before, the, before I came into this particular satsanga. And to be fair, I feel that those entities that are assisting higher qualities and higher volumes of sentience, such as ourselves, go through the evolutionary cycle are actually a higher level of sentience themselves. So my my understanding is that the earth in this instance is, is actually better than the sentience associated with, with, with the, the star that we call soul. So from that perspective, it's our current environment that we incarnate into, which has got individualized free will at this particular frequency level, is actually a, um, a more important entity than 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 the sun which <clears throat> creates the condition for the potential for us to be here while providing a, a light source and a heat source and a, and, a, and a energy source um do planets evolve to play a bigger role as an entity like a star or a sun well it's the other way around basically the the, the more focused an entity is the more they have to do the less focused they are the less they have to do so for instance the the, the sentience associated with the galaxy is spread very thinly versus those that are that working with them, you know, billions upon incarnate entities. Uh, and those are incarnate entities could be more than that because, of course, we can get more than one soul in one body. They're, they're, the, they're the ones who, who play a bigger role, actually. So it's the other way around. The larger the, the, ent the, the entity, um, the more diverse or more diffuse these sentience associated with this because of the, basically the volume. But the smaller or the more denser in this instance, or the more focused is a better way of saying it, therefore the, 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 the bigger the role. Uh, next part of it is, or does the true 
its true energetic self, simply put more of its consciousness into a bigger phys physical body like a star, instead of spreading it out to multiple planets in a solar system, for example. Well, as a, I'll just explain it. It's, a, it's the other way around. It's, it's to do with the focus of those entities that are incarnating or using a particular location, and it could be of local density, for example, uh, for some way of experiencing, learning, and evolving. Question two. In the end, Alex, you said that the whole true energetic self could be sentience behind a galaxy. I've just explained that. You also said the Earth was moved from its current location from somewhere else from outside our solar system. That's correct. Are the planets in our solar system projections from one just uh, from, from just one true energetic self or multiple true energetic selves? It, it can be that one true energetic self can be in control of a number of different localized areas of density or planets, uh, or it could be one. So in our particular instance, the, the solar system was, was in existence. It was particularly balanced or in harmony, and there was a gap. And that gap was where the, the Earth was placed to be able to assist in the potential for individualized free will to happen because of the location within the galaxy itself. So the planet itself was, was perfect, but the location it was previously in was in, was in, was in danger of, of, of being terminated due to natural functions, whereas where we are had lots more longevity, or where we are now had lots more longevity because the star was more stable. Okay. Uh, what about our Milky Way galaxy? One test or many tests? One test. That's all I do know. Are they projected from a test in a full dimension too? Um, the sentience associated with a, a galaxy or a solar system is usually a function of, let's it's, it's, it's call it lower evolutionary levels. So full dimension two is about, is about right. Once, once we start to get into dimension, full dimension three or four, or even five, where we start to consider the, the possibility of no longer needing to incarnate to perpetuate our evolution progression, then we then we, we classify as being quite you know highly evolved. So a volume of sentence that is associated with a planet or even a, a a solar system or a galaxy is is sort of quite low down on the evolution level, but still has a, a, you know, a significant role to play because it's it's allowing the potential for those other locations to exist. But most of the sentience is used in the perpetuation of our desires for those areas to exist as well. So we 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 all um collaborate together to, to maintain the potential for the 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 function and the and the content associated with the physical universe to exist in together with those volumes of sentence that are specialized in certain things like galaxies solar systems you know, stars and planets that's okay, good good questions okay let's just go into see what's in the chat uh, i've got five questions here okay so this is from Daniel. We seem to have a great many challenges with the shifting of the energy. Is there a better way we can support or deal with energy that help others? Basically, we need to be a rock. We need to provide stability. And if we can provide stability, then it helps those who are basically unstable because they can then gravitate towards us or they can gravitate towards the ideas that we have. And, and also those individuals who are, so we say, disturbed by their capability of connecting with the greater reality in a more uncontrolled way. So if we can provide the stability for them by being there for them when, when, when required, then we can create the potential to help them. And that over in an overall position, that allows us to create a condition where we're starting to in, increase our overall frequency as well. Uh, question from Jagdot. The first question: metal, uh, mental construct that make. Uh, that, well, so I'll start again. Is it metal or mental constructs that we make in the universe, physical universe? Does it go with this in the energetic as part of our programming, or are there passive mental constructs? Um, there's two. So I'm going to leave it there for that. Then I want to come back to it. Do the mental constructs get uploaded into Akashic records? Everything we do from being incarnate in the human body is recorded by a volume of to a sentence associated with the source that's classified as being in this instance the akashic records there are different records for different 
of civilizations and body types and frequencies within the physical universe that's recorded as so the akashic is specifically for humanoid incarnation uh, and, and our existence now and whatever we create and the circumstances we create and how we interact with those circumstances in those different environments but it so it doesn't actually go with us as such although there are, t there are plenty of times when we leave our incarnation and we may recreate around us a construct which is consistent with the environment that we've just left as an incarnate entity and that then it takes a, quite as, as a, an amount of time for our god and help us to help us dissolve this and start to realize that we, that we no longer um <laughs> we no longer incarnate but we are in fact back in the energies because when we're here we're so immersed in who and what we are for, from the perspective of being a physical entity in a body that we start to dis you know, forget who and what we are so when we go back to where we, re where we really are it's it's a bit of deprogramming that we need to have so the mental constructs that we can take with us are actually what we created in those frequencies associated with where we are after we after we finish this incarnation but they're they dissolved um but the ideas and the and the and the, the, the experience learning and evolving beyond everything we do is recorded in a volume of of sentience you could call it memory if you want to associated with the source but specifically for those souls that incarnate into the human body okay part two is it not possible that when we move back into the energetic, the, the true energetic self, source, or origin, can dissolve and incarnate karmic links and set them free? Since this is the, this is um, really an illusion, and then the energetic sentience is our real self. Uh, yes, they can. And actually, you know, there's lots of opportunities for advanced entities to dissolve sent, dissolve karmic links or addictions to low frequency environments themselves. I mean, there's plenty of stories that, that um advanced yogis in india for example do it and have done it and, and would continue to do it to help their students progress so they become that detached from the addictions the thoughts you know the, the thoughts processes and uh, and actions associated with being addicted to you know material wealth status um health or you know food drugs etc 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 um, or even thought processes, you know, so, you know, low frequency thought processes. So those could be severed if they're going to help us uh, an entity progress under their own steam later. Um, and of course, we can, the source can do it, and so can the origin. But the point is that our striving to remove these links ourselves, our ability to create a condition where we can overcome the addictions ourselves creates considerable learning considerable evolutionary progression so that's why the source and the origin don't they let, let us carry on because in our striving for the ability to navigate through various different environments without having help to overcome those environments and, and master them we we would we are going to create a a, a a, a, a significant level of evolutionary progression which also benefits the source as well and of course therefore the origin okay now there is two physical uh i've got i've got a problem with my okay <laughs> as a as a, a pop-up obscuring a particular word and i can't see what the word is but there's there there is the two physical words which we the worlds which we see over our eyes and the, then which we meditate our worlds okay um we enter the spiritual world of our mind's eye in hindu mythology there is a state that exists beyond what we can see with our mind's eye which is called the adi shakti could you expand or comment on this yeah well basically <clears throat> the spiritual or third eye is, is focused upon the locale where we are so the spiritual third eye isn't just about perceiving from a visual perspective that which is in this particular frequency and those that are above it's also a gateway to projecting the consciousness or the sentience out of the body into other locations within the physical universe so in in essence the third eye also deals with clear sentience as well which is which is cosmic consciousness or clear audience which is she's um telepathic hearing as well 
So it, the, the the third eye is, or, or the spiritual eye or mind's eye is, is capable of doing lots of lots of things, not just the just the visual side of things. So the state beyond what we can see with our mind's eye, being called ad, adi shakti, is basically moving us beyond the frequencies associated with our incarnation, which are the first three. The next four are the um, physio spiritual aspects of the body, so those as well. And may, and may be out of the body by by, eject, by ejecting the sentience beyond the body from the fifth from the from the sorry the, the tenth frequency, which is the eighth, ninth, and tenth, which are those frequencies associated with allowing the the soul or the aspect to enter into the body by by acting as a funnel effect, if you want to go from the high frequency, high bandwidth down to low frequency and low bandwidth. So it allows it allows the soul to go beyond samadhi in real terms because. Projecting the sentience beyond the physical just creates the, the ability of being in, in astral traveling or samadhi. So it's that's within within the frequencies associated with the physical universe. So the so adi shakti is beyond that. It's actually similar to traversing the frequencies that, that I teach through the cast bonus course and and the and the in the physical courses, where we teach people to move their their sentience outside the body, outside of the frequencies associated with the physical universe, and into the frequencies associated with the the other full dimensions and therefore the multiverse, which is consistent with Adi Shakti. And and if you think if you think about it, this is going into the, the thought processes of, of what is beyond God. Yeah, the absolute. And that's what's beyond that's what's beyond the source. And that's that's going into the, the, the environment that is supported by the sentience of the of the origin as well. So fourth question, how does a true entity self know what is available to experience in the physical? Can one's true energy itself download experiences from other tests, negating the need to experience something again? Yes, they can do download it. In fact, they they experience it anyway. Everything is experienced concurrently by every by every other volume of sentience. It's just that doing it without foresight or precognition or knowledge of the environment is what gives us evolution progression because it's hard. So yes, of course, a true energy itself can observe experience get the information from other true energetic selves and their aspects of the souls that are projected into the physical and the locations within the physical um universe and the multiverse but doing it without all of these higher functions all of the higher frequencies all the communicative ability associated with being in the multiverse is what creates the significant evolutionary condition think of it like being able to find your way to the center of a very complicated maze Whilst being deaf, dumb, and blind, that's 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 a similar sort of analogy. It's, it's much worse than that, actually, but that's that that gives you an idea of how difficult it is for us to be here. And in doing so, we accrue so much in, so so much more evolution than we, than we would do w were we still in the in the multiverse. Um, is why we come here, basically. Okay, Jagdos, fifth question. He's got six actually, or well, more. Fantastic, seven. <laughs> let's get through them so if, if it's been three cycles of creation and annihilation of our origin uh, it's actually not the origin it's um, <clears throat> three evolutionary cycles of the source occupying a volume of a volume of the structure of the origin and populating with his sentience okay that's what it is if all the energies are recycled then how does origin remember it's been in three cycles so it's the origin remembers the three, the more the cycles that the source entities have done, because the source entities are doing the cycles, not the origin. Okay, and this and the and, and because the are the 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 source entities are the, the the entities that are experiencing, learning, and evolving by populating those other volumes of of, of structure that they're with their sentience, they retain it all. We get we get we get reabsorbed into full communion into the, into the source, so we become one with the source again. So based upon that, we as source also remember what we've experienced and they move into the next evolutionary cycle in another location within the structure of the origin. So so, so in effect, everything is recorded in all of the different locations within the source associated with the different types of civilization that have been created as a function of, of souls or transitic cells projecting smaller aspects of themselves into different locations within within a a particular universal environment, respective of whether it's low frequency or high frequency. 
So to continue this, then how does it dodge memory three cycles? Also, the cache records of the old cycles are still available in the new cycle. They're there, and this is why we evolve faster. The, the second evolutionary cycle was faster than the first. The third is faster than the second. The next one, whenever that ends up being in, uh, invoked, will be significantly faster than the third. Eventually, we'll get to an evolutionary cycle that happens significantly faster than me clicking my fingers. So that's because we experience, learn, and evolve. And all we're doing it, every time we move into a different location is actually filling in the gaps. And the gaps get smaller and smaller and smaller until eventually we've, we've, we've filled in all the gaps and we understand what we're doing, and therefore we move on. If we're all made of aspects, for example, driving aspect, we keep our car in a, pro, in a driving program in our subconscious mind, so we do not have to relearn or think about it again while driving every time. Um, well, we do like to relearn these things because we learn it in a different way. It's the diversity of, of experiencing things which creates the evolutionary content. Just to say we've learned to drive a car, for example, doesn't give us the the depth of experience. We can get we can get we can get experience and subsequent evolutionary content, but in experiencing the same thing in various different ways, attacking it from different angles, experiencing it different ways with different levels of capability, ability, observation, circumstances, and even environment, gives us a depth of understanding. It's all right driving a car on a flat on a road, for example, that goes from A to B and is straight. But when we start to have to change gear, for example, we learn something else. When we have to go around corners, we learn something else. We have to do U-turns, we learn something else. We have to park the car, we learn something else. When we have to go up hills and go through a hairpin bends, we learn something else. When we have to go through things faster because there might be a, a severe weather condition, we learn something else. So every time we experience the same thing, we experience it in a different way, which gives us depth of, of evolution, therefore a higher quality of evolution. Okay. So next bit. So, so then there is addiction to low frequency behavior, which is also an aspect. While meditating, we try to resolve any addictive um, aspects of our behavior. Does that mean that we need to resolve good or useful aspects as well as such as driving to be truly liberated and, and merge with origin? All of those. <laughs> we need to try to resolve any addictive aspects of our behavior and resolve and understand and work with the good aspects, recognizing that those things that we've classified as being bad are also good because they've also given us a potential for experiential um, learning and subsequent evolutionary uh, progression as well, and the, the accrual of evolutionary content. So everything in that question is, is relevant. Last question, if humanity needs to evolve and, and society to become more equal, that is no one poor, that, that, that is no one's poor or no one's rich, then wouldn't that negate the aspect where the source was to accrue evolutionary content when various possibilities of people experiencing lots of wealth and no wealth? At this point, we move beyond the need to use the physical universe to experience, learn and evolve and subsequently evolve. We will no longer need as a, a collective to be here. So the souls that are incarnate in, in human bodies and keep coming back into human bodies, forgetting the other, other bodies that are, that are all around the, the physical universe, we would basically have mastered being in the physical collectively. And therefore, we no longer need to be here. So we would no longer need to incarnate collectively. Okay. So a good question. Daniel. Is this some of the most difficult times the planet has, and soft system ex is experienced? Um, no, but we're getting close to it. We're getting close to a couple of conditions that, that Atlantis experienced before it became, um, so we say, it fell into disrepair. It fell into into decline. We're getting close to that, but we are also becoming more aware of that as well. Whereas there was only a few people aware of it in the Atlantean period, and they were overruled by the, the vast majority, we'd be having significantly more individuals arguing the case for the, the alternative direction. So we so we are a, a bit better a bit better armed. Julia, do soulmates who have the same true energetic self also share the same past life? Do past life experiences accumulated with the tests or only by solo souls souls aspects? 
every every aspect of a life or incarnation uh, or experience is absorbed by the true entity itself and is available to all aspects of that true entity itself. That means every aspect of sentience is projected from it can access everything that's it has experienced itself and the other aspects that are projected into various different aspects of the multiverse or the physical universe can also experience it. So they can share the same past life, basically. They can share the the, the, the same future lives because everything's in the now. In, in the now. So, so yes, they can experience everything. But where we are right now is, a, is in a, a, a low-frequency environment where everything is, is, is considered to be experienced in a linear perspective. So whereas normally we're in a higher frequency, we experience everything concurrently or everything's in the now, from where we are now, we have to experience it in a, in a very slow, very slow logical way. Um, the lecture as part of this satsanga, which the, the listeners will have already have experienced, <laughs> and the, um, the meditation, which the listeners will, will experience, is based upon understanding the now, how to understand what the now is. And I've given a, an example of what nowness is, which I think hopefully everybody can experience. Okay. Daniel, what causes fear and res resistance to improvement? The ego. Do you experience discouragement and how best to, to transcend low feelings? Um, basically, yes. Understanding that the ego is the thing which is created as a function of our incarnation here of our body association as a function of us being almost totally cut off from the true entity self because of the low frequencies and therefore the low communicative bandwidth, low processing power, if you want to call it that. It's a bit similar to trying to communicate by the use of either Morse code or, or handwritten letters with something which can access every aspect of the, of the world wide web in, in, instantaneously. So, the communication is so slow it's almost non-existent so the ego is a function of the creation of the of, of 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 us being isolated temporarily but the ego knows that it's it's only a transient state of beingness and it also knows that if we start to become more spiritual we start to increase our frequencies we increase our communicative bandwidth so therefore we start to understand who and what we are we become self-realized and when that happens there's no point of the ego being there because we start to understand what our real personality is, which is a collective function of our true energy itself. But the, the ego fears this, so it starts to put things like fear into it and, and, and fear into us, anxiety, depression, um, indecision, all these different things to basically create a condition where we are um, <laughs> you know, not going to go down the spiritual route. It tries to keep itself in, in, in command and control. Eliza, please will give us some advice or encouragement on how to be a rock and listen to uh, to, to an act uh, on our own inner guidance. Trust your intuition. Logic is a function of ego. Logic is sometimes useful, but trust your intuition. Recognize that you can't change everything, but you can change a little thing. And collectively, little things mean big things. So don't worry about the big things. Just be the good example. Don't get into arguments. Be calm. Be collected. Give the considered response. Do the right things. That's being a rock. Showing how we should behave and be mature whilst we're here. That's being a rock. And people start to follow it. Not at first, but they would do. So it's just trust in your intuition. Trust in your inner guidance and stick with it. Know that you're inherently programmed to do the right thing. It's the ego that makes us do the wrong thing. Think about that. Daniel, do the beautiful books behind you represent the best of the Akashic Records? No. <laughs> There's significantly more than than this that, than I've ever done that is that is there as well. So my work is a is a is but a small pixel in the picture, basically. So look around, see what's there. There's lots of things which are sort of kindergarten level, which is fine. There's lots of things which are advanced, which is fine. Look at everything that's there, assimilate it, use and get drawn to that which you feel is right. And then you'll be you'll you accelerate your own evolution in your own level and become more expansive in your own level in your own way. Julia, in your book, Lucifer caused the results of what of 
that which we we are human or human i'll start again in your book lucifer calls the results that we humans on earth can make decisions by ourselves be selfish have free will not be controlled by our true energetic selves which i think is actually causing problems so is giving up free will giving up making any decisions being selfless at least in big ways can make us more detached and from necessary karma um we initially had the capability of choosing to be um let's call it subservient to source and that would have given us even more more power more free will but we chose to be to think we could do it in ourselves and so and it's got of course the 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 entity we classify as Lucifer that, that, that negated to um, advise those other entities that are sort of governing the individualized free will program or project, whatever you want to call it, um, in, a, in essence, identified that we could in fact drop down the frequencies because of our free will. We wouldn't always choose the right way. But that, in essence, is giving us what is called a depth of experience making the wrong decision then recognizing it then making the right decision next time when, we, when we're exposed to this to similar circumstances is is basically where we start to evolve more so in accruing karma we start to understand where we've gone wrong how we can navigate better through our incarnation here how we can navigate better through being indifferent locations and circumstances that that hit us that would press our buttons for example but we can not be affected by it so although it's caused problems if we start to behave ourselves properly we will become a, a much more evolved race but right now we're, <laughs> we're on the edge and um, we could drop down the other side but <clears throat> There's been so many times we've done that, that there's an inherent level of, shall we say, collective consciousness that knows when we're doing things wrong. For those souls that are of the human soul, not the um, not the animal soul, or not the, the backfield people's soul, because they haven't got the same quality of sentience or volume of sentience, but they're still here to help us move forward. Okay, But our level, we should be able to start to really understand where we need to go to make sure we do the right thing and become a mature civilization and therefore overcome the need to be here. What percentage of humans have, this is from Kristen, what percentage of humans have aspects projected from the various um, FDs of Tessies? Most trinitic selves that are in the, in the evolutionary cycle have at least one aspects projected into the into the the, uh, the gross physical or any other aspect of it so i'm being told the average is about two or three basically some have 12 some have one some have none so that's the sort of the the average yeah daniel can we stop the war this is the war in ukraine uh is the war the worst thing can happen or is something worse it's sometimes war has a focus and that is to for us to recognize that we need to be more mature that means we need to stop the the, the 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 aggression between different different um, groups of individuals and we need to start to reprogram people to be that not as a function of taking them over but also as a function of showing them by um example of how good they can be if they think behaving that in certain ways and don't become um uh, i forgot the word there they, they don't become specialized in their thought processes they don't become radicalized for example okay so it's, it's it's a focus to show us how to work together as well to better each better ourselves and, and become more, a more coherent community as well when we help ourselves in, in times of strife that's when we show our real humanity julia for our earth humans uh do we print past lives from other souls to the to uh, a lot to learn how many printed past lives does each of us have on average by printed, you mean ex experienced. Most individuals have, on Earth, well over 10,000 lives, probably close on them. the average for people I've seen, which is 25,000 or more. Um, and then there's the lives outside of the, the physical, the of the, 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 um, the Earth location, other, other areas within the physical universe, where it's it could also be you know, 10s, 15s, 25s, 30s, plus 
thousand lives as well on top of the earth lives. So there's that of the number of people I've seen, it's around twenty five thousand. But that's just that's just the, the people I've seen, which is only a couple of thousand people, not not the billions on the planet. So it's 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 it's, it's immaterial basically. It's it's to do with what we do with what when we're here, not how many lives we've had. The quality of what we do here makes the difference, not the number of times we're here. Daniel, uh, what is the best thing about being here with with you? Oh, with you is a, is but for me, the best thing about being here with you is knowing there are people out there who are wanting to see the greater greater reality, work with it, navigate around there if they're their incarnation in a karma free way and evolve beyond the need to be here. And in doing that, being a good example to the rest of incarnate humankind. That's the best thing about being here. Next one. Uh, Mohan, the concept of Atma Shakti is related to Tess or aspect of Tess. Appreciate if you can share your viewpoint on this. Uh, Atma Shakti is basically a function of both Tess and uh, an aspect because at the end of the day, the, the Tess exists in this environment that you would classify as being Atma Shakti, whereas the aspect which is projected from the Tess can exist wherever it wants to, as well, wherever it's projected to be into. But the, the Tess basically exists in a location within the multiverse as a function of its, of its overall evolution progression and tends to stay there. Although it can move around certain levels, uh, do, do what it needs to do from its perspective, it's it's it will push or project smaller versions, smaller volumes of its own sentence into different locations to experience, learn, and evolve more details of things. And so that can also be in the multiversal environment and not here. So the concept is can be can be addressed or classified or experienced by both. Uh, Julia says, I truly appreciate that, that we have you here uh, being our spiritual guide. Uh, we are lucky. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> I have me or cap I admire your capability very much. Is the limit of you is the limit of you as Guy Needler is that you are a human being right now? Yes. <laughs> Basically, every every volume of sentence, irrespective of how evolved they are, if they're in the human body or a low frequency um, environment. They have to abide to the, shall we say, the function of that that environment. That included Jesus, it included Muhammad, it included um, the Buddha, it included um, the Lahiri Maharshi, it included uh, uh, Paramahansa Yogananda, it included um, Sri Yukteswar. All of those prophets, you know, Pat Patanjali, all these different, these clear thinkers, uh, you know, Socrates. They were all they were all governed by the by the frequencies that are here and, and therefore therefore constrained by them. But but yeah. And it's hard. It's hard being here. Daniel, when you depart from the physical, will there be a replacement for you and the connection to higher realms? There's great, there's great information. We appreciate you. Thank you very much. Um there will be others who will take this work beyond me, clearly. I'm simply a stepping stone, as others before me are. Um, I will not return. This is I've, 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 I've been told this is my twelfth incarnation, and <laughs> others have had thousands. Clearly, but I've only had twelve, and I don't intend uh, and I don't need to be back anymore. Uh, this is a, another. An, this incarnation is another version of something I've done before, and I've done it several times. And the the, the, the need for me to be here is no longer necessary because there's lots of other individual, lots of other souls who are doing the similar things. And that there are those who can take you further. And uh, and so there should be. What is the best daily practice for us to do each day? Meditate, meditate, meditate. <laughs> and meditate every day. You can do it at six in the morning, noon, six at night, midnight. Those are the cardinal points. Irrespective of where you are in the world, use those in your own time zone meditate and if you can do the chakra opening exercises which are i always broadcast as part of the um <clears throat> the emails that are sent out for those who are on the email list as well uh you know, clearly and they're, they're also available on, on the about on, on the press pack on the, on the website do those every day open your chakras every day elevate your own frequencies and and therefore 
become more aligned with the next frequency level up. So you start to experience, learn, and evolve in a higher way and start to see where the mistakes we would make if we were blind or deaf and blind here can be overcome by being a higher frequency. So meditate, 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 and do the chakra opening exercises. Okay. I think the last question here is from Eliza. Has your achievement in human form helped us uh, achieve simply by energy? Um, well, no, there's exercises we've done. We can do, we do the correspondence courses. We do, we meet like this. We, 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 we learn how to heal. All of these things um, help us all. And you help others as well. Whether you've been a long-term member of this of the satsanga over, over the last 12 years, or, or whether you're, you're a new member, it, iris, irrespective of what you do, you help. Last one, when we hurt somebody, when we hurt someone's feelings, how best to make amends? Apologize. Tell them that you're wrong and explain why you were wrong. Okay. I must say to you all, because we're about to, to uh, run out of time, thank you very much for taking part. And uh, I'm going to give you my love and Saucy's love. <laughs> Welcome to the meditation, the World Satsanga. And as the lecture was on nowness, it seems appropriate to do a meditation on connecting with nowness, specifically in a holistic way, holistic way, so to speak. And using the, the cinema film example, Let's use that as a basis for us to experience nowness. So let's adopt our usual meditative posture. You can either sit cross-legged in a lotus position or half lotus, or as we do normally in the Western world, sit in a straight-backed chair with our back straight, our spine erect, and our neck in line with our back, our spine. Feet are flat on the ground, and our hands are palm uppermost on our upper thighs. Closed eyes are gently focused on the origin of the spiritual or third eye, which is in between the eyebrows and above the bridge of the nose. And what I want you to do is just to just Focus on the lecture. Focus on the lecture and focus on visualizing or seeing a roll of cinema film in front of you. You can use your mentally spoken word to explain the same thing if you have difficulty in visualizing. Remember, of course, that visualization is just as powerful as mentally stating what you're going to experience. If you say, in front of me is a cinema film, and I take it out of its can and place it down in front of me on its reel, then that's just as powerful as actually seeing it in your mind's eye. You're not inventing it, you're creating an ability to, to link in with the ability to be in the now and experience the now concurrently. So let's just do what I've just explained. Let's visualize a, a reel of cinema film in a can in front of us. Again, we can assume it's been taken at 60 frames per second and there's two and a half hours of exposures there. Take it out of its can. Under the can, just unscrew it or just lift it off. If it's a press fit, Take the reel of film out, move the can to one side out of the way. That is two and a half hours of nowness at a resolution of 60 frames per second. This is the resolution in which the eye sees things moving fluidly. OK, 
Okay, this is how we see things normally. If it's any faster, we start to see things moving faster. But if you play that which is done fast or exposed faster at the 60 frames per second, then we start to see more resolution. Now place around you another 10 rolls of film in total. So we have 10 rolls of film. At the first roll of film, additional 9 making 10. So we have nearly a day's worth of exposures from the exposure rate of 60 frames per second over two and a half hours times 10. Use your intention to take out all those rolls of film and place them around the first roll of film. If you want to, you can create a recycling bin and put the, the cans that the film was in, in the recycling bin, so the energy associated with it gets reabsorbed by source. Now, let's consider that we have 3,650 of these, creating just about a year's worth. 3,650 groups of these 10. Okay. Creating, not quite, but nearly a year's worth of now. This is just one particular nowness. It's not the parallel versions, it's just one particular nowness. Now let's consider that each frame is not a frame taken at one frame per every sixtieth of a second or sixty frames per second. But it's a whole event space, it's a whole event for us, a localized event space associated with something we've done. Something everybody's done separately. Either individually, separately, collectively, or in groups. We have a lot of nows now. But all these nows are in one space, all grouped together, all stacked upon each other. Clearly when we're in the energies, when we move out of our brief sojourn into the lower frequencies, which, which requires us to incarnate or associate ourselves with a body of energy that is consistent with the environment that we're in, this instance is the human body, we can absorb all those cans of information, all those reels of film, with all those exposures. So let's just randomly, <clears throat> let's just randomly focus on one particular roll of film and one particular exposure. Experience that exposure. This is what may, may be experienced by a, a channeler or a medium who is looking to find information about somebody's potential future because Clearly, there's lots of different event spaces, lots of different versions of the nowness based upon our collective and individualized and group 
decision-making processes and our desires to collaborate and corroborate with the nowness that we want to create. So let's randomly pick a roll of film and randomly pick an exposure within that roll of film. What's happening? What image do you see? What does it represent to you? Be absorbed in that particular event space. This is what it's like experiencing linearity. We are focusing on just one exposure in that whole role of film that you've decided to focus on. Now clearly we are we are now experiencing one nowness which might be not, not, not be on Earth, it might be in a different location, different galaxy, different frequency within the physical universe. It might not be even on a planet in a system in a galaxy within the physical universe within a certain frequency. It might be in, in some other location within the multiversal environment, which doesn't have anything gross physical or even higher frequency physicality about it. This is what we focus on usually in linearity. We focus on one aspect. One particular experience within the environment and the circumstances within the environment created by those other entities that are also in that environment. <coughs> Now zoom out a bit and allow yourself to be to absorb everything in that particular roll of film that you focused on the frame within. Now from our human perspective we have difficulty in assimilating that but consider it to be the whole roll of film to be similar to your existence so far, that which you are in your human body. The whole role of film is your life, your incarnation to date. That role of film experience is everything you've experienced. It is everything you've experienced. It is your sum total of experiences to date in this body, in this incarnation. Again, you can't experience all of it in one go, concurrently, because we're in a low frequency. But you know, you feel all of those things that you've done concurrently, because all of those things that you've done in linearity are the sum total of what you are now. This is experiencing a small aspect of total nowness. Considering that what you are now is the sum of all of your experiences. Your local, group, 
collective event spaces. Now consider what it's like to be in your true to be associated with your true and edited self, to be in it, a part of it, a higher frequency. All of those other roles of film are now able to be experienced concurrently. So all of those other nows that you've had in previous incarnations in different locations within the physical universe, different lo locations in frequency, different locations within the multiverse, are now the total collective of your experiences and all the other experiences, that the other aspects or souls that are projected down from your trinity self are known by you as well. The sum total of experience and therefore evolutionary perspective, evolutionary content, is now. Now we only focus on the passage of nowness in second per second, or milliseconds, but consider that you can experience everything, all those hours, days, weeks, months, years, decades, centuries, millennia, billionia, trillionia, quadrillionia, Elia. <laughs> Different event spaces are now. Feel the expansion associated with being in all those nows, now. It's like being omniscient. It's like being omnipresent. It's like being the source, because actually we're all part of the source and therefore we are the source. Zoom out further and see multiples of that groups or group of rolls of film. Multiples upon multiples upon multiples of those thousand that we had. And you can experience that as well. Ask any question from this particular linearity and it's there. The answer is there already. It's already been experienced. It's already been dealt with. It's already been a success. It's already been a difficulty that's been overcome. It's already been something we've walked away from. Everything that has ever been done, is being done, could be done, should be done, may be done, has the potential for being done, or the potential of the potential of the potential of the possibility of the potential, etc., 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 is being done. Imagine knowing everything about everything and experiencing everything about everything. That is what it's like to be in nowness. Just let yourself absorb this feeling of being omniscient and omnipresent. A function of being attached to the total nowness.
just be in the collective now. Feel this expansivity. It expands in every potential direction. Not just in one direction, but in all directions. Linearity doesn't exist because everything is now. Because you're absorbing all those roles of film and all those different exposures within each of those rolls of film, all those thousands upon thousands upon thousands of rolls of film, now. So we'll just stay here for a moment, just to be in the nowness. To be the nowness, not be part of it or observer of it, but to be the nowness in its totality. That which is, is. It's not tomorrow, it's not yesterday, it's not a different version of yesterday or tomorrow or future or now. Everything is now. So hang on to that feeling. Not a thought, a feeling. A state of beingness. A state of nowness. As you come back into the room that you're in. Come back into the room and you slowly open your eyes, still be the nowness. Just because you're focused on one particular frame on that roll of film doesn't mean that you are not in the nowness. You, of course, you're in the nowness. Stay connected to the nowness, not one small aspect of nowness. Continue to open your eyes. If you want to ground yourself, take a drink of water or tea. And just remember the omniscience, the omnipresence that you felt by being in the nowness. Everything is now. Think of how liberating it is to know that you can get the answer to anything now because it's already happened, is happening. Now. Okay, so that's the end of the meditation on nowness. And I look forward to working with you all again in October. And wish you all of the sources love and my love and namaste to you all. Did you see the aliens in Crete? <laughs>